Hey, it's Trey Benson with the Arizona Cardinals, and you listen to Fantasy Football Council. What's up, everybody? This is Kyron Williams for the Los Angeles Rams running back, and I'm tuned in with the Fantasy Football Council. Welcome to the show, guys. We got a big episode here for you, and on the show, we've got, oh, Jim. Jim, Jim, are you sleeping? Jim looks like he's in a, a deep sleep. Jim, Jim I'm going to clean up. my room later. <laughs> Jim. Oh, wake oh, up, what? Buddy. Oh, hi. What? Oh, sorry oh. about that. Oh, my goodness, Jim. I mean, it's kind of fitting for today's show. We're talking deep sleepers, and you look like you were deep asleep. Welcome. I was. I was sleeping, man. It, it, you got to do these things early in the morning out here. So <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> there's our skit for you guys there's our skit we're keeping you guys entertained on your toe i don't think we i was a skit i think jim was actually sleeping and you know that's really fitting today jim because again we are talking about some deep sleepers deep, 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 deep. sleepers i gotta sound oh here we go deep sleepers <laughs> uh dude I, i'm pumped about the show i'm pumped fantasy football is back it's dude it's august like it kind of creeped up on us didn't it it sure did. I can't believe it, man. I can't believe it. My birthday's next week, by the way. So happy birthday oh, to happy, me. Happy 35th. Jim's turning 35 this week. Congratulations. Oh, that's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. No, I'm, I'm turning <laughs> old as f- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Jim, Jim's actually just waking up. He's actually swearing on this show. That's a first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> old as dirt. You can, you sure. can, you can bleep me out later. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> old I'm not too happy about this birthday though. I'm not too happy about it. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> All right, guys, if you are new to the channel, we got a good one here for you. Smash it, tap it, slap it. You know, a lot of people are enjoying this morning show. They're like, man, we, we like the morning show. They wake up to us. And I'm just so happy to do this for people because again, I was a nine to fiver years ago and I worked in the hydraulics industry. I, I was a sales rep. I've, you know, I've worked in shops. I, I've done everything, you know, growing up. Uh, and, and it's just nice to give that to people in the morning on their drive. Because sometimes those drives get really boring. And why not share our passion with you guys every morning? Talk about what we love and kind of escape from reality. Because that's what fantasy football does for a lot of people. So I'm very blessed for everybody here. So if you are new to the channel, uh, you're just coming across. It's the only channel that gives you guys the truth, uh, non-consensus style. We also make it fun. So smash or tap it. Hit the thumbs up. If you're a regular, again, hit the thumbs up. Let's get this out to more people. Other than your league mates, we don't want them to hear about it. Uh, so I'm very blessed to be able to do this for everybody and, and give that uh, to, to everybody. You know, I think it's great. Hey, Jim, Jim's, Jim's quiet today. <laughs> Are you still, still waking up? up? Sorry about that. <laughs> Jim's still asleep. He's like, yeah, whatever. All right. So uh, if you haven't gotten 16 round draft solution, secure the solution, secure the championship, guys. Uh, sleepers, breakouts, auto players drafted each round, everything you need to crush your leagues. It'll leave you light years ahead of everybody else. And when you guys sign up, you're going to get a login. It's very simple. You're going to get a login to give you access to all my mock drafts, all the sleepers, principal cheat sheet, everything you guys need. So you have an ironclad roster, secure the solution, secure the championship. And there's also another tool, the 16 round plus tool, which is going to give you a lot of different analytics, including bounce back players, regression players, contract year players. Jim created a tool called the 16 round plus. You can get that as well. If you get 60 rounds, you get that for 50% off. So once you're in the course, you, you know, make sure you look for the link to the 16 round plus tool. And you're gonna get 50% off. Uh, we just want to give you guys everything you need to crush it. And finally, Jim, again, these announcements are important. I hate when people skip announcements because we're giving people a value. Uh, make sure you guys grab a ticket to the sports summit. We've got Kyron Williams, Trey Benson, Pat Fryerbooth, and more. It's like a virtual summit. It's all online. So again, when you're checking out, add the summit. It's August 21st, 730 Eastern, guys grab the summit ticket again we're going to be doing a live podcast and you're entered for a ps5 once you guys sign up for the summit guys automatically all right so lots going on jim man i i don't even know where to start man fantasy football is back i'm pumped up i'm excited dude i'm super pumped yeah absolutely man let's uh let, let's do let's let's talk about these players all right, before we do, you know how these shows start, Jim? We are starting with the latest news with Breaking Brad. We now have breaking news. Jets. Uh, Brees Hall has surprised Aaron Rodgers. It's a surprise. Jim, how come you don't give me surprises the way? I, I don't know why Aaron Rodgers would be surprised at what Brees Hall is able to do. <laughs> so he's, he's like... 
He, surpr he surprised Aaron Rodgers with his receiving ability. It says a lot when your bell cow running back is the number one in progression on red zones, uh, red zone routes, Rodgers says. So he's surprised. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I don't think that's really news, but I, I mean, did you actually see the videos of Aaron Rodgers and, um, you know, Garrett Wilson arguing at the sideline? Now, there's multiple videos and some people say it's like a spirited debate and it's all part of the sport. I don't know, man. I'm a little concerned. What if these guys start hating on each other, dude? I, are you concerned a little bit? Not particularly. I mean, who else is he going to throw the ball to on that team? There, there's not a lot of other options there. So, well, he was uh, bidding for you know, Adams to come back. So you, you never know. Maybe Adams makes a return. Probably not. That but. would be that would be a blockbuster. But I don't think it's going to happen. Um, you but know, that, it's a little concerned. Uh, but but we'll, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it will. I don't know. I was just a little concerning. You know, you first hear that Rodgers is saying, hey, man, we got to bring back, you know, Devontae Adams. And then I see multiple videos. And I, if you're not following, follow my IG. I'm posting a lot of this trading camp stuff at Fantasy Football Counselor. Uh, turn on the bell there as well and here because I'm going to be breaking news here on this channel throughout the season. Um, man, I'm telling you, it's like I'm a little concerned, you know, when when they're fighting by the sideline. And again, some people say it's all sports, all blah, blah, blah. You haven't been on a sports team, Joe. You don't know. I'm like, I do know. And if you have bad chemistry, that could lead to not getting the ball a lot. I don't know. Just, just. Yeah. And, and Aaron Rodgers, we all know is a total pain in the ass. So, you know, <laughs> a little, a little I, I could you know. see why he would, he would rub people the wrong way. <laughs> a bit of clash of egos, maybe who knows? Yes. Uh, big right. clash of egos. <laughs> Uh, Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott threw nine touchdown passes, seven for seven uh, on team drills and practice on July 31st, and he's yet to throw an interception through two padded sessions. Now, again, we're a couple days ago. I just wanted to highlight Dak Prescott looking good in training camp. I mean, you're a veteran. You know your team pretty well. That should be expected. Uh, also, uh, this is a guy, uh, we're talking sleepers, not, not as deep of a sleeper here, but Marshawn Lloyd had missed the start of training camp. He was dealing with some hip issues, but he was back to individual, individual drills this week. Uh, he took part of team drills on Wednesday for the first time. Head coach Matt LaFleur called him a work in progress, but noting how valuable the reps are that he missed. The good news is Lloyd appears to be good to go. He remains high upside. Um, yeah, he again, I think he's a high upside player. Missed some early time. Some other rookies missing time, including Isaac Arendo, other running backs, other wide receivers, um, including Roman Wilson, who got hurt. I didn't get the update on him for the Steelers. Roman Wilson. Uh, I'm not concerned. I think I think he's a good... I have him in a couple leagues. If, if Jacobs goes down, or even if Jacob has a lack of performance, which he had last year, I'm not really convinced on Josh Jacobs being amazing. Although, again, it could be one of those... He absolutely tears it up, new offense, or he could absolutely bust. Josh Jacobs, I'm not convinced on, but uh, that's pretty much it for news, Jim. I think that's it. Break and Yeah, and, and as far as the rookies go, I don't like it when rookies are missing camp. Uh, that's a real big red flag for me. Now, you know, missing a couple days, whatever, that's not a big deal like Marshawn Lloyd. But they're talking like, uh, you know, Roman Wilson's week to week, Isaac Garendo's week to week. These guys are missing big chunks of camp. And that is that is a critical time for these rookies to be able to show what they can do to earn the trust of the coaches and the quarterback. Um, it's absolutely critical. So when these guys start missing big chunks of time, that's when they're kind of just off my list because, you know, it, I, I don't, that I, you don't want them coming into the season where they're not yet established For and sure. that's what's going to happen because they're missing time. So that that's, that's my philosophy on rookies missing time. So oh, and I, I just want to stand corrected or just update on Roman Wilson. So it was an ankle injury and it will be right. week, week to week. So I think, I don't think it's going to be anything catastrophic or uh, severe for that news. So that's good news. Uh, Cause I do have them stashed in one league I drafted in July. Cause it's one of those leagues where you can you get like 10 bench players. I'm like, why not grab Roman Wilson? Cause those guys were flirting with other wide receiver options. I'm like, you know, maybe he's, he's a guy that could step up because uh, yeah, they need, they need another wide receiver there. So that's it for breaking news. There really isn't anything unless something breaks in between the time of this recording. And when you guys listen to it, uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go to these deep sleepers here. If you want all the deep sleepers, guys, grab the 16 round draft solution. Again, be light years ahead of the sheep. I've got them all laid out for you uh, with detail and where to draft them. Okay. First one here, Jim, this is your guy. Um, you know, I'm more into like rookies that are deeper sleepers and guys that, you know, instead of guys that have had a couple of years to wow us, we're not wowed. 
Ty Chandler, round 13. This is your guy, Jim. What's the thought process here? Well, the big thing is, is uh, Aaron Jones is the player in front of him. And yeah. Aaron Jones is old. Aaron Jones gets injured all the He's time. Tight. Sucks. And Ty Chandler was pretty good last year. He actually took that backfield over from Alexander Madison. Uh, he got 4.6 yards per carry when he was in there. Uh, it looked pretty good. I mean, in, in his limited work, he only had like uh, 102 carries, 25 targets, but that was in uh, limited work towards the end of the season. Um, but I'm like, okay, so if I don't have any faith in Aaron Jones, who do I want? Who do I want that could fill in the gap? Should anything happen to Aaron Jones or if Aaron Jones underperforms and it's, it is Ty Chandler, man, Ty Chandler's the, the, the next guy up. He's probably going to have a, a significant role anyway, probably around a 30% share anyway. Uh, but I just like, uh, where he's going on the drafts, you know, uh, around 13th, 14th round. That's a great place to get a player like this, that if anything happens to the lead back, he becomes, uh, an RB one, you know, he, he'll yeah. get RB one volume. And so I really like him. I, I think, I think he's got some nice upside and uh, I think that he's definitely worth a pick. Yeah. You know, I was in, I, I wanted to try something different, right? I was in a $350 buy-in league and I always go robot. So I've got my 2k buy-in league, which I know is going to be the winner for all my leagues, but I'm like, let's just try it differently. I've never done this and it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. I went zero RB and you know, I was really thin at running back, man, because I, I think I went, I don't know who I went now. I got to go back. I'm in like so many leagues now. I can't even keep track. But I got like a top receipt, two out receivers. One of them was Marvin Harrison round two. And then it got like really tight. It got really tight at running back. And I needed like a fourth running back or something like that. So Ty Chandler was sitting there late. I just grabbed him because I don't believe in Aaron Jones either. Am I excited about him? No. Does he have some upside? Sure. I mean, anything can happen. Um, it is what it is, but I'm just not overly excited. If you want to fill your team, add some depth. I think Ty Chandler could be an option just simply because I'm not sold on Aaron Jones. Definitely. All right, let's move on to the next deeper sleeper here, which again, I keep talking about this man. We talked about it last year is that there is wide receiver ones, Jim, that are completely unnoticed or undrafted last year. For example, perfect example. Uh, first of all, the guy we're talking about here is Jalen, Jalen Polk round 14, give or take, right? And his ADP should be climbing because that news out of training camp is that he's the wide receiver one. He's looking like the best option there in a situation where we don't even know, you know, who the quarterback is. But, uh, you know, there, there's, a, there's Drake May, Jacoby Brissett. Like, nobody was like, I heard Brissett might start the season. Like, we don't know. Brissett's going to be efficient, but he's not going to be crazy good or anything. I think he could feed the ball to Paul and make him fantasy relevant. But again, going back to last year, Tank Dell, Nico Collins, like literally undrafted or drafted after round 12. Both these guys were completely slept on. All of a sudden, their top picks this year, okay? And I'm not saying Jalen Paul's the next tank. I don't feel that. But what I'm saying is that there's some serious value here for a guy who on the depth chart is going to be the one. Someone's got to catch the ball. And, you know, people are taking risks. They're taking risks in round two with Nico Collins when they're not sure he's the one. So... If you're asking me, would I rather have Nico Collins round two, who could be the wide receiver two, three, we don't know, or DJ Moore, who could be the wide receiver two, three, we don't know, or DK Metcalf, who could take a step down to JSN this year, or just get a diluted target share, and I got to spend a third, fourth round pick on these guys, um, where I can get Jalen Polk, who's almost guaranteed to be the one, and there's other guys that are going to be the one that you can get later after round six, um... Give me that. And by the way, I want to say this, Jim. I should have said this in the breaking news here. Breaker Brad, where are you? I've missed something here. We now have breaking news. Thank you. Thank you. There's something I forgot to mention, and that's why I tell people to listen to the show in entirety, is Romeo Dobbs is going to be the one. This is what I've been saying the entire offseason. Jim's going to disagree because he is a Jaden Reed fan, but Romeo Dobbs is the guy that's doing the best at a training camp. He's looking better than ever. He re he affirms my suspicions, Jimmy. He he's really confirming my suspicions that he's going to be the one because he was the best guy in playoffs last year. And now we're hearing this out of camp and he's the best value. Jim, I know you're disagreeing here on this because you got Jaden Reed. You're a little biased, but Dobbs is going to be the one man. Don't be surprised. 
Mm, I will be surprised if he's the one. I mean, no. this is a team that's going to spread the ball around a lot anyway, so I don't think anyone's going to really break out with a huge volume over any of the other receivers. There's a lot of depth on this team, and they really do spread it around. Uh, but I do like Dobbs. I think Dobbs is a great value where he's going on the draft board uh, as well. Uh, but I personally am, am just uh, looking at more towards the second-year upside of a player that place in the top 36. Those, those, those are the players that see a real nice increase in their volume going into year two. And Dobbs is going into year three. We already saw the big increase from year one to year two for him. And I'm yeah. not sure there's there's that much more upside on him outside of about 100 targets a season. Okay, so, but you made, you made my point exactly. You said there's going to be target dilution, right? You're in a situation where you're getting Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, and Romeo Dobbs for a lot cheaper than you're getting Tank Dell, Stefan Diggs, and Nico Collins. And believe it or not, statistically, and I've said this before, Jordan Love looks better than C.J. Stroud. He throws more. He did more, more touchdowns. Like, overall, more. And you're getting yeah. these guys for value. That's how I look at it, right? I'm not – and that's the thing. Like, that's all – the point I'm trying to make here with this with this video, and I've talked about it in all my videos, nobody else is talking about this, is that everyone's drafting on consensus. And, dude, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people in the early rounds, just the same way they were disappointed with T. Higgins last year, round two, and all these other guys, Waddle and Smith and – Aim high on the depth chart, okay? And you're getting Paul round 14. I mean, why not? Just throw him on your bench, dude. Throw him on your bench. All right. Yeah, next, for for me, yeah. uh, for me also, uh, Polk is going like right around, right at around the exact same point that Demario Douglas is is also happening, and Demario is going to be the slot receiver on this team. Yeah, and I have been I've been more inclined to take Demario Douglas because I think there's more volume there as a slot guy. Uh, but they're both good choices at that at at that point in the draft. So yeah, value. Now I ended up when I drafted in June, Demario was the guy I drafted, uh, and then now the news is coming out of Polk, and that's where. Your advantage, you're saying the closer you draft to the season, the more insight you get. Very well said. So, yeah, I'm I'm nailing a lot of things like Keon Coleman's where now I got him on all my teams, but now the news is breaking up his ADP's right. So I win with Keon Coleman, but I lose on some of the super later round guys that are kind of breaking out now. So it's kind of give and take. You kind of win some, you lose some. All right, next guy here, Jim, I don't agree with you at all. I'm not touching this guy at all. Like zero zilch, not, not, not going to do it. Not, you know, years to while, we're not wowed. Darnell Mooney, like what's, I mean, the Falcons have the Mooney now. Yes, he's the wide receiver two target, but why Darnell Mooney, dude? I'm not touching him. Well, the big reason is because of the quarterback and, and Kirk Cousins uh, can go ahead and he can support three wide receivers. You, you see it. He, he, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson and Jordan Addison are the three guys that he supported. All were all were top startable fantasy picks last year on the Vikings. And uh, so now I'm like, okay, so now he's in Atlanta. You know, you got Kyle Pitts, uh, you got Drake London, but there's room for a third. There's room for a third person. And I think Darnell Mooney is the third. And I think uh, Darnell Mooney had a great rookie season. He's been very disappointed the past couple of years, but he's had really bad quarterback play uh, in, in poor offenses. I think this is a greatly improved offense. And I think that, that Kirk Cousins can support uh, someone like Darnell Mooney on, in a, on a nice back uh, bounce back year. And he's looking to be a very good value at where he's going on the draft board, just based on, uh, you know, what his projections are right now, which I have at about uh, 93 targets, 819 receiving yards and six touchdowns. That's what I haven't projected at right now. Yeah. He, he projects as a great value at pick 184. Uh, so I like him. I, I think, uh, I think he's where I got him in my, uh, in my dynasty, in our dynasty league. So, here's what here's what I think about him. Uh, Tim and I did a show yesterday. League winners or chicken dinners. Here's what I think about Darnell Mooney. That's it. That's my thoughts on Darnell Mooney. Let's move on here. <laughs> you, know, you know what I have to say? I have to say winner, winner, chicken dinner, baby. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just, no, I'm not touching him at all. All right, next one here is uh, Theo Johnson. Now, he's been doing really well out of training camp. Apparently, he's running routes really smooth. He's got soft hands, okay? Not like moisturized soft, like soft as in catching hands, if you guys aren't familiar with the NFL. Maybe Jim's got soft uh, moisturized hands. Jim, what do you think? How are your hands? Soft? 
Right, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a white collar guy, so I don't do a lot of, you know, <laughs> spend a lot of my time on the computer. So that, that's, that's the, yeah. <laughs> with me, although I do lift some weights, I do have some calluses here from lifting weights, but, but Theo Johnson is like, you know, again, could be a big time upside tight end you get for value. He's going undrafted. I mean, look for his ADP to rise, making him somewhat of a late round stash. Now, again, in my 2K buy-in league, He's basically still on the board, so I might put in a bid for him uh, just to have him. I've got I'm comfortable with my tight ends, but why not add some some depth at tight end? Because there could be something here, Jim. I mean, if you look at the depth chart here, the Giants. I mean, he's definitely outperforming Daniel Bellinger, which is, I don't see that being an issue, right? And then they've got Malik Neighbors, Wandell Robinson, Slayton. Wandell sucks. Slayton sucks. They got single Terry catching the ball in the backfield. Tyrone Tracy could be a sleeper as well. But I look up Theo Johnson. He's 6'6", 250, out of Penn State. Last year in college, only seven touchdowns, 341 yards, right? But he could be special if you watch some tape. He's a fourth-round pick, 107 overall. Not the highest draft capital, but he's a big dude. He's doing well catching the ball. And there's a void there for a second receiver and a safety blanket for Daniel Jones. There could be something here, man. I, I don't know, man. I, all I'm saying is he's a late-round deep sleeper in a stash. I, I like him. I like this feeling. I got a good feeling about this. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think it's more like a wait and see for me. Uh, you know, I mean, there is a there is a void there because um, Jaron Waller retired. So, you know, there is they, yeah. they need a new tight end. And who knows? It could be this rookie. Uh, but I, I think it's still a little bit too early to, to make a real definitive claim on him. Uh, plus the fourth round draft capital. Uh, I don't know. I, I've just uh, uh, just got to wait and see if he actually does anything before I go and pick him up. I like them. Stash them. Stash them late. Like if you have room, right? Like there's probably a ton of other players I'd rather have, but keep monitoring the situation. There could be some something coming out of there, out of the Giants camp here with this guy, okay? All right, next guy. We're going to have a little bit of debate here. Um, again, let's talk about Quentin Johnson because he sucks. And everything is now, with this training camp, it kind of confirmed everything that's been happening. So my big thing was I thought they just didn't like him. I thought maybe he was with the uh, coach's wife or Herbert's girlfriend or something like that. Turns out he actually does, in fact, suck. And he had such an opportunity. And where I was wrong, I'm like, grab him round 10 last year because he was a first-round pick. I knew Mike Williams was going to get hurt. I knew Keenan Allen was going to get hurt. That turned out to be true. They both got hurt. You know, Keenan Allen missed the last three weeks of your fantasy playoffs and championships. As I said, he would. Mike Williams was sucked, and he was out, as I said he would. But I'm like, why isn't Quentin Johnson getting the ball? This is everything that I thought would happen, happen. But it's like, it's just he sucks. And every time my my feeds i see my feeds with news and stuff i see him dropping a ball this year in training camp so that brings us to these deep sleepers you got josh palmer around 11 i got brendan rice pretty much undrafted son of jerry rice and i like the upside of brendan rice more and i saw him make a really good catch by the sideline in training camp a, a video came across we got jerry rice he's got his feet in there like jerry rice in with brendan rice he's training him he's watching over him he's monitoring him get mentoring him and he's got way more upside than a Josh Palmer, who's never a true top wide receiver. He's always a complimentary wide receiver three, if that. Mind you, he's got the rapport with Justin Herbert. But I think either one of these steps in as the two. I've got Lad McConkey on all my teams. He's the one. And there's already reports come, coming out of camp that he's the one. He's been making some great catches. But Josh Palmer, Brendan Rice, what are your thoughts here, Jim, on, on either one of these guys? Yeah, again, I, I apologize for talking about Quentin Johnson like last week or two weeks ago or whatever. Uh, you know, it's it's just more of what we've seen out of him. He is not a thing. He's never going to be a thing. He's not a good NFL wide receiver. And and so they were saying like in three wide receiver sets for the Chargers, he's not even out on the field. He's the he's the number four wide receiver at best. And when he does get out there, he freaking drops the ball. He, he yeah. sucks. Josh Palmer has been doing great in camp. He's, you know, he does have a nice rapport with Justin Herbert. They've been playing together for years now. Yeah. Uh, and, and he's been catching passes. He's been catching touchdowns and he's basically operating as the X receiver. So, um, frankly, that's good enough for me. I'm like, that's, that's good enough. He's a bargain on the draft board. He's going at, uh, right now, ADP about 139. Uh, so, you know, we're talking, you know, uh, 11th, uh, 12th round is when you can get him, uh, and, and, you know, to be like the X receiver on a team for Justin Herbert, I think that pre presents tremendous upside. And as far as Brendan Rice goes, 
although he, he, you know, I think he does have some upside. He has not moved into that top, into the uh, 11 personnel, the, you know, the top three wide receivers yeah. on this team yet. So I'm not really interested in him at this point. I think Josh Palmer has the best opportunity uh, to, to be one of the primary uh, receivers on this team. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with, uh, Quentin, uh, with Josh Palmer. Like I said, a complete pivot off of Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson is dead to me now. Um, and I'm going to take the upside that, that uh, Josh Palmer can, can give you. All right, let's move on here. And again, Chark, too. I'm not years to wow us. We're not wow. I'm not in on Chark at all. I'm, he's doing well, apparently, in camp, but I'm not getting excited. So it's going to be the Lad McConkey show with some upside of Brendan Rice and some consistent, some consistent games out of Josh Palmer. That's how I see this playing out. And, uh, you know, they talk about the team being run heavy, you know, possibly. But is J.K. Dobbins going to stay healthy? I doubt it. He's splitting right now with Gus Edwards. I don't know, man. Gus Edwards already banged up a little bit. He's back in, I think, now. Um, it's just, I don't know, man. Those guys, I just don't trust those running backs. I really don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm running. I'm, I'm rolling with Gus. <laughs> All right. Come on, if, if a running back's going to get injured, it's going to be J.K. Dobbins uh, yeah. in, in the league. The, I think the highest probability for risk for an injury from a running back has got to be J.K. Dobbins. So Yeah. All right, we got a couple other guys here for you. Make sure you grab that 16-round draft solution. Secure the solution, secure the championship. And I am offering direct coaching as well. Go to thefantasyfootballcouncil.com under the tab direct coaching. Book your uh, session right now. We're going to do some direct coaching here for you. We can talk one-on-one. -on -one. Book your call right now. They are filling up fast, all right? Next guy here, I got two more players here for you, running back and a wide receiver. Audric Estime. Est they call him Audric Estime. Estime? Estime? Estime, but I call him S Estime. Audric Estime, because he has time, right? So you, you're, not, you're not French at all. You're not using that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, he, even, he even has a little, uh, the little thing over the E. The, uh, you he, know, the, he, hold on. Does he really? Hold on a Yeah, second. yeah, he does. He does, yeah. I don't see it. Depends on where you're looking. I'm looking at a stats chart. I don't see the estimate. But yeah, Audric S time. Because it's, you know what time it is? It's S time. So yeah, Audric S time, undrafted or give or take round 18 to undrafted. Like this guy is pretty much being slept on, but again, doing really well out of camp to give you guys some context. Six, one, two, 15, fifth round pick by the Denver Broncos in a situation where we talk about this years to wow us. We're not wowed. I mean, is Javante Williams going to do anything? They got Jaleel McLaughlin. I know we were talking before the show. You're more in on Jaleel. But Estime is like a bowling ball. He goes in there. I see him running over people a little bit. He's got he got some power. I don't know, man. There could be some work here. I'm just not overly excited about a fifth round pick, third on the depth chart at the time of this recording. But if you want to roll the dice and assume that Javante is going to completely collapse or fall or fail this year, which is viable, you know, you could roll the dice on Estime, but I don't see a time a, a chance where he actually overtakes that job because I think Javante is good enough and efficient enough to kind of hold that job and not look amazing, not be amazing. So I'm not overly excited about this pick, but again, training camp looking good and got some upside. I mean, he doesn't have Brees Hall in front of him. He doesn't have Saquon Barkley. It's like, it's Javante. So there is that inkling of hope that there could be something here. Yeah, personally, I'd, I'd rather have Jaleel McLaughlin because he actually showed what he could do last year. He looked really good in his uh, in his limited work. Uh, and actually, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit more in on Javante as well. He's looked good in camp. He's been yeah. he's been out there with the ones. He's been performing. He, uh, you know, and and so uh, you know, I, I just think it it looks like though it looks like this is going to be a real RBBC. You know, I mean, it's it, but but on the flip side, uh, you know, Sean Payton's running backs have always been good for fantasy. And so why not take a shot on Audric as estime with like your last pick in your draft? Um, if, if you need another running back, you know, that that's where I would be with him. But frankly, I'd rather have one of the other two guys at this point. S time, Audric S time. All right. Last one here. We got another Bronco I'll wrap this up here is Troy Franklin. Okay. I haven't heard too much out of training camp from him. But I know that I've, I've been hearing really good stuff out of Bo Nix. He's been dropping dimes. He's been looking pretty good. Looks like he's going to be the starter. And he's got the rapport with Troy Franklin. It was not a coincidence that the Broncos drafted uh, Nix and then they drafted Troy Franklin. It's not a coincidence. You know, uh, fourth round pick, 
obviously not very high draft capital, but he was drafted with intention. 1,383 yards last season at college out of Oregon, 14 touchdowns that coincidentally happened to be coming from Bo Nix. So I don't know, man, there could be something here. I mean, for the value for both of these guys, especially if you're in a super flex league and you want that third quarterback and you're looking to add some depth to that wide receiver chart, there could be something here. He's giving me tank Dell vibes from last year. I'm just getting the tank Dell vibes or it could be a, a nothing burger. And for round 14 and after I'm okay with having a nothing burger there where this guy's going to be the one, possibly the two, maybe even the three, but I don't have to spend a second, third or fourth round pick. He, you could potentially be drafting the wide receiver one in Denver. If Bo Nix decides, Hey, I'm going to gravitate to this guy. And, and if I look at the depth chart, Jim, who else is there? You got Cortland Sutton who just Cortland got Sutton, paid. Yeah. Josh Reynolds has been catching. I heard some things out of Josh Reynolds, but again, I don't know, but I'm not excited about Josh Reynolds. Marvin Mims had, you know, uh, last year, I think he was dropped last year, hasn't done anything. So, yeah, it's it's a field stretching role. It's there, there's limited volume there. There's not really anything good for fantasy for Reynolds. So they got Dolchich. Um, you know, I, I just see something there. I mean, I'm looking at the depth chart. Mims, Reynolds aren't a threat to me, and Sutton has not been outstanding. Like he's good, but he's not outstanding. He's okay. So if I'm, I'm Bo, I'm Bo Nix, man, and I, I have that rapport with my guy, Troy Franklin. I mean, why not? Why not go to my guy? I don't know. I, I, again, for the value, do it. Deep sleeper here, do it. That's my thoughts. Yeah, Stop. I mean, the, the potential that Troy Franklin could be the number one on this team uh, is is something to think about. You know, and again, uh, who drafted him? And it was Sean Payton that drafted Troy Franklin. Sean Payton did not do anything with with Cortland Sutton to, to bring him onto this team. So these are uh, these are Payton's Peyton's guys. And, and so, yeah, I think there is a real opportunity here and, and a real sleeper that uh, Troy could become Bo Nix's favorite target because they played together before they know each other and they got 14 touchdowns together last year. So yeah, I, I think that there is the potential that Troy Franklin could be the number one on this team. And at that ADP where you can get him, which is super late. Um, yeah, go for it. And if it doesn't work out, who cares? Right? Absolutely. You got him. All right, Jim, that's it, man. That is it for Deep Sleepers here. I hope you're awake now. I hope everybody else yeah, is awake. Can I go back to bed now, counselor? Come on. Yeah, you can. I, am, I am tired. <laughs> but everybody else has to go to work. So, guys, have yourself an outstanding work day. Glad you guys join us every morning at 7 a.m. And lives. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying lives. I've started lives now, Jim. I'm doing lives every night, 8, 8.30 Eastern time. So, Jim's oh, cool. going to be joining us for some of those as well. We're live. We're going to be we're gonna be booming here on this channel. So, turn on the bell. Smash your tab. It, slap it and morning content coming to you every single day. Thank you for being here, guys. We appreciate you. Jim, go back to sleep. We're out. We'll talk soon, guys. <laughs>